this i uh, spoke with uh, you know vasan earlier and we were chatting about the film spotlight we, we got to see the got to see all four films and uh, you know he he was uh, you know in the he told me that the very uh, germ of this idea was uh, compared to let's say the original story is that he wanted to tap into the kind of burnout that you know that sets in very early you know in an artist life you know in in modern times you know earlier a burnout star would be someone in you know who's fading in his 50s or 60s and here it grips youngsters much more sooner you know when you're just you know starting out and stuff like that and you know the kind of work uh, gets there is that something you know you, uh, you could connect with being being an actor yourself and you know looking at the theme of the story is it something that uh, you guys could you know be, uh, easily have a feel for well i i think first of all the vikram arora is somebody that's seen a crazy amount of superstardom quite early in his mm, career mm, while mm. i have seen none so uh, <laughs> that was uh, that was uh, i had to kind of use my imagination a bit there but uh, he when we were talking very early he told me to look at vijay devakonda and, mm, and you know the kind mm, of uh, mm. crazy fandom that he has you know and yeah. and uh, i don't know him personally but you know i i i i'd imagine with stardom and superstardom you have lots of fans and expectations of certain roles that you have to do you know right. and and that can kind of be uh, almost like a prison you know hmm. um hmm. i think i think with my journey i've kind of tried intentionally to stay away from that and just done different hmm. experimental hmm. Things, you know so uh, yeah. um that was kind of interesting for me to get to live that you know uh, hmm. to enjoy hmm. pretending pretend to be a superstar for 10 days <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, uh yeah no i think but i think we live in huh. the age of social media right like i huh. remember when my father he used to tell me in the 70s and 80s mm. there were single mm. screens and right. and you know newspapers and and there was so much mystery and an aura around an actor because the yeah. access was so limited uh and now uh, we are constantly posting and on social media and that's a part of our job you know uh, uh very few people right. choose uh, not to do that uh, you know so uh yeah i mean i think the burnout can definitely happen it's something that can creep up on you and it's really interesting that vasan uh you know had he's such a genius to have the imagination to take a piece of work from that era and that time and just right. make it so contemporary and so topical and relevant you know uh, right. which was very right. exciting uh akansha your your character uh, you know she presents a wonderful counterpoint you know to where vick is you know in in how he views his life and he he views his work and uh, you, your character is someone who you know, who's who's doing this who's very much in sync with you know just what the material benefits of you know having a a commercial mainstream career is and you know and there's a clarity that she has which he lacks in the you know at least in the beginning of the film uh, was this interesting for you? So luckily for me, I am Anuya. I am someone who says in the moment, who does stuff for the fun of it. Right. You know, so pragmatic. Mm. I don't get. I'm mm. not much. Mm. Care. It's very easy to relate to her, uh, and it was funner because the clash that you see between her and Vic is yeah. uh, it's fun because I don't know uh, actors like Vic. I've not uh, on my on a personal level. So it was fun. It was interesting because we've also. Um, improvising a lot there was also a lot of like mm. her pent up anger that you see the, the dialogue she's mm. trailer and then you know so it was interesting to just play around with because yeah i am a nuya so that is a lot how i would react to someone who was who would probably be big you know right. like just right now to right. right. you know like that is my approach to life and films all together so it was interesting right. it was also a lot right. of me so i guess that made it easier yeah right uh- I tell me this, you know, your your last appearance. We saw you in AK vs AK, you know, where you technically played yourself, and you know, or were ready to, you know, take aim the jokes at yourself as well. Uh, you know, how easy for you is it, you know, to let's say get a little meta? You, of course, you you mentioned the distinction between Vic and you, but even then, you know, this can be seen as a meta reading of, you know, given that you're still an actor and you're still a big star. Uh, does this uh, does this come easily to you to do roles that are more close to your skin? You know, to be honest, I'm not like my character in AK vs. AK at all. Uh, you know, I think uh, uh, Akansha uh, spent a little bit of time with me, and Vasan will tell you I'm actually quite quiet and withdrawn, you know, right. Um, right. Uh, and I'm more passive in my demeanor, you know. Mm. Um, so, for example, if Anurag Kashyap came to my house to meet my dad, I would just probably go and say hi and go back to my room, right. you know. Right. Right. I wouldn't really put on a show for him. But uh, um, it's it's great that people are saying that now, which means I must have done yeah. something right. Uh, right. But you know, it, it's not. Uh, it's it's a lot of fun for me. I think filmmaking. That's the great thing about it is, you know, it uh, it's so much better when it's not too self serious or heavy handed, mm. and um, mm. we can all kind of like laugh at ourselves and celebrate each other yeah. uh, while, right. while kind of doing that. But like you said, like AK versus AK is extremely meta. It's like super duper meta. Yeah. But yeah. Spotlight is pretty meta as well. You know. Mm. Um, mm. 
and and it's just so cool that we're getting to do this kind of material you know this just uh, would be like unthinkable even when i yeah, was yeah. doing mirza never imagined that we would my films would i always wanted to do this but i didn't actually think it would be possible you know um right. so i definitely love that uh, people think i'm like really serious and very brooding but i'm actually basically like just in like stupid you know uh, and <laughs> silly um right. so so yeah it's uh, it's good to kind of uh, have the ability to show people different facets of my mm-hmm. personality mm-hmm. and uh, just to conclude i'd like to say when i started my career i started with the more internal kind of intense parts yeah um but ak versus ak in spotlight are more external parts and they're more performances in the true sense of the word where with bhavesh the idea was to take the performance out of it completely and exist as naturally as possible and mm. just kind of react to people around you and mm. wanted to come across as somebody very like unremarkable uh, that kind of rises to the occasion you know yeah. uh, uh, as opposed to trying to be the center of attention like it okay. is in ak versus spotlight mm. Mm. so maybe if i would have started with these two parts and then done mirza and bhavesh joshi it would have made a lot more sense to the viewer but i think now after seeing these films hopefully they can look back at that work and kind of see the see the work cuz i'm those are films i'm really proud of as well you know uh, right, uh right right and yeah i mean but but to answer your question uh, i kind of mm. love doing it and i actually have a really exciting romantic comedy that i'm doing uh after this mm. film uh where uh, i just get to be really silly and uh, have a lot of fun and uh, you know when nice clothes and i have makeup and hair hopefully i want to tell me about the scene uh, you know where uh, your character turns up you know at his hotel and you know they talk and you know, there's there's a lot of the graph goes wonderfully you know initially uh, he's happy then he is dismissive and then he's angry that you know she believes in the stuff that they be selling and then she or your character gives it back to him you know uh, just tell us about shooting that and you know going through the rhythms of it with harsh so on paper um it was hmm. other simple scene uh, it hmm. was just few dialogues back and forth and so i said hum hmm. kuch improvise kar liye and i was like okay cool we we'll figure it out when we got hmm. on set actually that was the longest scene i have ever shot and so told me that he's ever shot and i'm guessing harsh is ever shot we shot that one scene for about 5 to 6 hours all night okay. so because we kept improvising we went from here to, if the grass graph on uh, paper was like this we sh- eventually shot this ah. So it was right. really right. because we all were giving our own inputs, like, and by the end we got so comfortable with the scene and with where it was going. We were saying our own dialogues, like, sir would nudge us, and then I would say something else, Harsh would say something else, and mm. it was all just it all just came together, you know. So it was really cool. Yeah. It was up and down. My voice again. <laughs> up and down, but me. But but, but yeah, just to, just to kind of build uh, build on uh, that. Uh, yeah. Just to kind of build on that, uh, Vasan sir. uh really made it clear to us that mm-hmm. you don't really see anuya and vik together in this entire r plus long film besides for that one mm-hmm. except know? for that one yeah you see them interacting on the phone you know uh and he said that these, this is a couple that's been together for a couple of years and mm-hmm. does have true love yeah. and fondness for each other so that in yeah. that that warmth yeah. uh, exactly mm-hmm. that warmth that dynamic then vik's insecurity his anger mm-hmm. the fact that he doesn't want to be told the truth uh you know he doesn't want a mirror right now you know uh yeah, yeah. the f- that kind of overtakes his him and like he pushes the uh, somebody that truly cares for him away you yeah, know right. uh but, but, where he where he's where she's trying to tell him you know don't watch the review don't you get the sense of the difference between them right then, right right so the last scene you know yeah right. so we can kind of start to gather their whole relationship huh. and then put it all together you know yeah i mean right. actually uh, that's really interesting that that you bring that up also cuz like when she comes in and she hugs him mm. he's happy that she's there but yeah. not like he's kind of like a bit torn and then he goes and he secludes himself and he's sitting there by the couch like a wounded animal almost like waiting for her to come and like comfort him uh but you know at, at that point in his film at at that point in his story people are not always telling him what he wants to hear which is not yeah. what he wants you know uh so there's a lot of like uh, uh it's a really incredibly written scene mm. by Nirain and Vasan mm. and i hope that you know we we're competent enough to um, have kind of brought the nuances to life right 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 uh, i i have a very uh, you know serious and important query that's been bugging me since i saw the film how much of your look was inspired by anyway bantai was he at all a reference uh, you know from the tamils <laughs> to you know the jumpsuit you're wearing uh, you know, i i i constantly kept feeling that was he was he a reference point and if not then then how did you guys like, go about creating uh, you know just how your character dresses up so the the look wasn't actually inspired by uh, by mway it was more uh-huh. uh, uh kind of so i just 
figure that Vic would be somebody that's very conscious about the way that yeah. he's put together and comes across, you know, uh, right. Um, right. to 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 the public eye. And um, hmm. the the look is actually very rock and roll inspired. You know, right. it's right. Uh, it, it's kind of like rock and roll luxury, uh, but also like kind of like grunge and um, a, like that first satin palm tree bomber that you see yeah. him wear when the a video call with Anuya is something that. Was a part of the YSL, the Seller Rock collection in Spring Summer '16. It's an iconic piece. Oh, right. It's been worn. Uh, right. Justin Bieber, Fanning, and everyone. So I, I kind of saw Vic as somebody that collects these pieces, so he feels better oh. about himself, you know. Uh, and right. he's, he's kind of like trying to, he's trying to like be like this like edgy guy, but he's actually very Indian, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so right. Right. Um, that was kind of the the idea behind the look. And a lot of the stuff is from my own wardrobe, like ninety percent of it. Huh. Um, huh. Uh, we had Abhilasha, who's an incredible uh, at what she does, and she kind of came over and we put the looks together in like a day, um, you know. And uh, he's kind of living in this hotel with Robbie, and they're kind of living that like yeah. rock and roll on that lifestyle, mm. you know. Right. Um, so I think it just fit really well with the world of the film, the character, and the color palette. Great. Uh, Kevin, you know, I saw the four films, and this one was the uh, I found this one was the more obliquely interpreted story. Like you know, if anyone's read the original, uh, you know, it's very different. It, it's very spiritually connected to the whole uh, world uh, that Ray created. But I found it unique. You know, towards the end, there's a lovely redemption that is shown to both the characters in a in a way that you know that's very sympathetic. You know, when the film starts, you feel that it's it's mostly satirical you know about these outside personalities and you know basan is just you know taking the mickey out of a guy like this and stuff but in the end the, it, it just lovingly comes together and you know there's there's a, a wonderful redemption thrown to both of them uh, just tell me about you know how the story sort of you know it sort of takes you down one way and you makes you see the frivolousness of you know what this guy is going through but at the same time also humanizes you know him by the end of it uh, yeah so um, yeah i mean i think that uh I, i don't want to give away too much about yeah, the, right, the, right, the, the, right, the right 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 but uh i think what's really interesting is um you know when you're an artist and you do work you 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 tend to be insecure most of us are in in some ways and yeah. you kind of can beat yourself up and bring yourself down hmm. and hmm. you take for granted how much your work is kind of inspiring people you know you never because you don't you live in such an insular bubble you don't really come into contact with everybody that sees your work especially when you are at a level like vikram arora who is doing like really yeah. massy films where the reach mm-hmm. is kind mm-hmm. of really wide mm-hmm. and you you if your your work can end up inspiring people in unpredictable and beautiful ways you know and uh, uh, that can kind of surprise you and 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 that sometimes that's all you need to lift your spirits you know and um, mm-hmm. uh, talking about lifting spirits is the spotlight is something that you carry within you we all kind of have it within us is that it, that, that internal kind of light you know and 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 insecurity in society and um, a- anxiety can kind of diminish it you know right, uh, right. but if you right. kind of let it shine bright you know that kind of emanates out- outward you know and it kind of becomes the spotlight you know uh, which i think is such a beautiful message you know right. especially yeah. with this time that we're living in where where there's so much trolling and everybody is like yeah. you know like yeah. call names and it's just such a yeah. disgusting environment you know is like um, you we we we're desperately trying to hold on to any sort of purity you know in our lives and our, i think i hope people even though they see vic stantrums and his bad behavior and mm. they 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 mm. see the they find that softness and vulnerability yeah because there is a certain goodness at least that i've tried to bring you know to the character mm. so so also there's so many elements that show your that side of you right all the people surrounding you that's your mom your your girlfriend your your manager that agent that those are elements to bring out your vulnerabilities right right yeah right Right. I I'll end with this. I mean, you know, Vasan had made a wonderful film earlier. Uh, you know, Mat ko dar nahi hota, and he he has over just you know in a couple of walks he's created a very distinct visual style. And what I found very unique is this is technically a lockdown environment of a hotel, right? Most of it is around there, and you guys shot this through the lockdown, and yet he visually sort of you know makes it so distinct. And you know, uh, all the filmmakers are playing with Ray, and you know, in, in, there's a lot of militancy about you know Ray aesthetics and Ray, uh, you know, be, uh, being this you know giant. But you know. Uh, Basan managed to get his own aesthetics out so well, and what makes him such a unique uh, filmmaker? And what 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 do you think? You know, uh, makes him such a you know visually distinct and you know unique filmmaker. So for me, I'm not um, hmm. crazy cinephile like Harsh at all, but I always right. knew I wanted to work with her, and I've only seen my Khud Aaj Bhi Hota. And hmm. I'm not an audience. I'm not. Uh, hmm. I don't an actor or someone who works in films. I'm I'm just an audience. Right. Right. It was 
he's someone who manages to get style you know uh, like i was so sleek and cool and i just i i, I don't know the right references but when i see it i'm uh, like oh my uh, this reminds me so much of you know it's so international yeah uh, he has substance he's just very cool and he also like her says doesn't take himself seriously and that shows right. in his work right but right. he has all these references he's so it's important cinema it's interesting cinema but it's light and it's cool light and, and you know and that's what jay right. is also like you see it with the colors and you see so mm. many references and they're not meant to be in your face like if you catch them right. you catch them if you don't right. they're you know but he puts these little you know we give for you uh, all throughout the film and all his characters are so like even in yesterday's interviews he was saying he's like no one here is someone psychic everyone has their own story so he brings your characters also with like mm. if they mm. say hi they have an entire life behind them you know and right. so kind of does right. that so yeah i just think he's very his style is very attractive as an artist and right. clearly as an right. audience for audience yeah. right. i think you know also yeah. like uh, the hods on this film like they are all incredibly talented but you know you as an hod it's it's so much about the director's brief as well like a lot of the mm. time and arm um, mm. like the use of the color blue you know there's so much mm. blue that's mm. kind of sounding mm. big as he's like kind of drowning within these waves and uh, there's there's kind of like a lot of like uh, uh um you know like there's a lot of like there's a burst of color man like it's just yeah. like it's just really a genius the way that he's lit the interior spaces i i wish mm. i could show you some of the scenes that have been cut out of this film there was this one incredible scene where at the start of the film vikram's mm. character goes to his trainer uh, and they're mm. in this gym which he lit like incredibly and uh, um, i i i say to him um, what are we going to train today and he says cardio so i say why always cardio he says for your face cut for your look <laughs> and you cut to basically him drenched uh, after running on the treadmill and he goes to the mirror and he looks and he he looks at himself and he says why do i need this look um right. in english right. and then bengali you know so the bengali is kind of like a tribute to ray uh, right. you know but like right. all of these obviously because we're kind of le- limited by length you can't have everything mm. into but mm. they went out there and made a picture you know um and and yeah i mean i think this is visually incredible you know it's it's a vis- visually really really stunning i think uh, abhilasha on costume dhara jain with with production design mm. is a genius mm. i think uh, uh, ishit which is with his lensing and kind of use of color and uh, it's not just it's not just kind of uh, there's a lot being kind of said uh, you know uh, visu- it's a ve- visually symbolic a lot of the stuff and it's not just there to look pretty you know right, um, right, right. Kind of, it, it it all kind of stands for um, for for something and um, and yeah man i mean i think he's just a genius he's he's somebody that really truly has a unique voice and uh, whether it's good or bad is never our decision right we we create a piece of work for people to kind of consume and have their opinion about right. and all right. we can try and do is be original and and try and kind of uh, be ourselves in a way where we are not afraid to kind of uh, share our voice with them you know uh, um, um, so so yeah i mean i think uh, akansha and i are very privileged Uh, and honored mm. to be able to work with him so uh, early into our careers and i i'm still in shock that he actually thought that we were capable of you know being in his right. film uh, fully you know, you know like, like when he called me when he sent me a message on instagram i'm like i i called him he's like are you sure i'm like are you sure and he's like yeah yeah dude don't worry it's just sofia coppola somewhere meets an edgar wright film uh, <laughs> <laughs> nice <laughs> right uh. yeah i'm sorry yeah. i'm going to call him and he complimented my work and i got confused i said is this a prank <laughs> <laughs> you, I love you, and really, so I love to work with you. I said, "Huh? I'd love to work with you." What are you saying? I was like, "Just bye." This is too confusing right now. So yeah. Super, super great. Uh, thank you so much, guys. I'm out of time. Really looking forward to uh, you know the reactions to Ray. I'm I'm specifically specifically will be looking out for Spotlight because I thought it was the most visually out there kind of a you know very uh, interesting take on Ray. Uh, uh, all the best, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, bye, Harsh. Bye, Akansha. I'll see you again. Have a great time.